camp aficionados. This is the video where you will know much more than I do, because I don't know vintage amps, I don't know Marshall, and I don't know all the different letter combinations of JTM and J. MP or JPM? Is that even a thing? I know JCM. I know the JCM 800. That's rock and roll. Um, uh, but then I don't know what the super lead is and all that stuff. I literally have no idea. I don't know who played what. I don't know what Slash used. I don't know what uh, what's his face. Angus Young used. I think there was a Plexi. Well, let's just say I don't know things and I'm going to explore this with you. Everything that you know better, please post in the comments. I'm ready to learn. So apparently, all these big ass amps that Marshall did are big ass amps. And they're heavy and they're pricey, but they're classic and they're le rock'n'roll, as they say in Hungary. Now, they finally listened and the JCM and the, I'm going to call this Plexi, this might be wrong, but I will call this Plexi. They now made in smaller, less expensive, lighter, and, well, quieter, not quiet. 20 watts, switchable to, don't ask me, it's around here somewhere, I'll post whatever that low setting is. And the low setting isn't much lower. It's still quite loud. You know what? You know why? Because it's this freaking Marshall. The quiet Marshall just doesn't exist. Marshall code. Is that a Marshall? You decide. Um, no, they will always be loud, but not ear-smattering, brain-melting loud. Kind of, it's giving me a little bit of a headache right now loud, because I already played it. Um, but a little bit of headaches, okay. That's the right loud. So this apparently is... A small new version um, looks like the original I think what do I know of the 1959 SLP and that tells me nothing I'm gonna assume that means super lead plexi why plexi well because this front panel apparently was plexi glass that's why ha! I know one thing so please don't bitch at me for not knowing my history my first amp was, a, was a, my first tube amp. Uh, my first amp, I think, was a little tiny, uh, horrible practice amp. Um, but then I got a crate transistor combo. And my first tube amp was a Savage 120 from Engel. So uh, that was in 93. So I was never, I never chased the dragon. No, that's not what I say. I never chased the vintage and all this stuff. But I'm growing to like what this brand has to offer. Not just because, and I have to say this, they're paying for this video, but seriously, I get it. I'm starting to get it. There's a lot of bitey, cranky, oh my God, it's too much sounds that you can get out of this. If you know how to treat it, just listen to the track in the beginning. How awesome was it? Also, thanks to my buddy, Adrian O'Shaughnessy from Ireland for writing the melody, lyrics, and singing on uh, the track called I Am Human. Thank you. Killer job, Adrian. So what we have here is a uh, the, the switchy oni, and then high mode, low mode, standby. We have presence, which when played with the strap, which I did. Let's keep that down. A uh, bass metal treble, and then we have traditionally, as we have on plexis, the two volumes, bright and not so bright. They call it high treble and normal. I had to read. I don't know. And then you have these this four input thing. So if you go in one, you're only going to the bright thing. If you're going in two, you're only going into the normal thing, which by itself is pretty damn round, and we're gonna see that. And then you have like a probably like a low and a high input. But you can of course bridge that. And I have this nifty rockboard cable here, which is actually kind of neat. And this is pretty much what you see most of the time on these amps. And at that point, you can actually mix both of them. It'll give you more gain options because it's both channels at the same time. And you can actually say, this is how bright I want it. This is how dark I want it and crank both. But we're going to go one at a time. Right now, we're going into this Synergy cap, which has the right height 
to place the amp on for the video. And it has, it's a very, very nice cap. It has vintage 30s in it. Uh, we'll also go into the Tone King cap, which is back there. Yes, it's a combo, but we can use that cap. We will also use the DI out, which is in the back, right there, into the Two Notes Torpedo cap, because that's a DI out, not a simulated out. So the Torpedo cap on the table over here, is going to do the speaker for us. So we're going to go DI, DI out into the torpedo cap and then XLR into the audio interface. And we'll also, we'll check out this effects loop that it has, which of course Plexus usually don't have. This does. And that's switchable. So right now it's switched off, which is very nice that it can do that. Okay, loads of stuff to check on a freaking one channel amp. Which clocks in at under a thousand euro? And I know Alex, you're gonna say it's a thousand. No, it's not, it's 999. There's one euro missing. 999, really light. I don't know how they did that. It is and um small and all that. And technically quieter. Well, a hundred more plexi is going to kill you. This only gives you a headache. Um what I love on this is they didn't go EL84. A lot of the small amps, they're going EL84, but that's not the real tube in the real amps. This has 34s. I'm saying this without having checked, but I will. This has 34s. We're gonna start with the Strat. Why a Strat? Because the guy with the fro that did the fuck the lady played. Did he play? I don't know. Did Hendrix play a Plexi? I think so. Did he just crank it up like crazy to get drive? I think so. Now you're gonna go, oh my God, oh my God, you don't know this stuff. Well, do I or do I not? I don't know. I really don't. So we're gonna go high. And right now I'm on the bright, which I think with this guitar is probably way too bright. <laughs> way too bright, so not recommended to play a strat into the bright channel of this amp. What you're hearing right now is, I'm gonna have to pull this out, what you're hearing right now is the um, MTP440 in front of this cab, which was positioned using some fancy slider thing. This, of course, is a Mac Mall S Classic. Because I have one! Let's see if I can tame that by rolling back the tone on this Tube Screamer, which is a Ghoul Screamer. Let's see if I can do that. <laughs> I'm scared that the gain isn't even halfway up and there is no volume and gain. This is not massive volume amp. There's just gain. Uh. bite that will cut through any mix it will also cut through your brain it's just too much so for the strat what you would want is the normal channel but that might be too normal that's roundness but now that's completely taking out all the um, all the brightness completely. So let's see how how much I can gain here. 
again in terms of brightness. desirable sounds it's not sparky enough for me right now but it's still very nice so um what to do well let's see how much game we can get if we dime this as they say <laughs> Pickups are very vintage output. This is as vintage that as you can get from a modern guitar. <laughs> on the effects loop right now. I think I did that wrong. I'll be right back. Yes, that's of course the tonal recall by Chase Blaze Audio. A very beautiful analog delay. sounds a little bit too fizzly. Why? Well, because what we're doing right now is we're really pushing the power amp. And an effects loop is in front of the power amp. It's between preamp and power amp, which means using an effects loop on this type of amp works only a bit. You have to be very careful with the mix because the power amp will compress it. So that means I'm taking the mix down quite a bit. <laughs> Compared to the JCM800, this does a lot of the drive in the power amp section, and then therefore the effect loop is less effective. <laughs> And we turn it off again. So but that's a cool sound. Um, what happens if I go in here? Is that a high input? Do I have more gain now? That's quite the gain already. With the strat, nothing in front of it. Let's push that. Gain is drive is down, volume is well, halfway up.
sorry, I'm having fun. So that's quite a bit. If I go in here, this is gonna kill me because it's a high input on the uh, bright channel. Don't do that. So, with this guitar, I'm gonna go in here. I don't know what the differences are. I literally don't. Should we go through all of the different combinations? I think not. Still have to be careful with the volume on the bright channel, but now... I'm going to switch that to the aux for a sec so we can hear that through a greenback loaded 412 and here we go. Now let's do the same thing, but through the Tone King <laughs> cab. Also, Mike with the Lewitt MTP 440, so you're hearing that now. That's an open back um, with a special selection in it for Tone King, which is vintage 30-ish. So, awesome! Moving back to this cab. Um, it's crash it. Yeah. It's probably way too bright. That's kind of... Oh, no effects loop. Here we go. Awesome. So how do they do that? This is gonna be horrible. What a sound! Holy crap! This is on the low setting. 
That's actually quite a bit lower than the low setting on the JCM, I think. I don't care what I'm playing, it's all loud and fun! Ouch! How did they do that with the 100 watt version? 100 watt version? How did they do that with the how a watt version? How a watt with the how a watt version? Okay, this is the setting. Everything on with this bridgey thing. still work like that when everything is just ridiculously dimed that adds a lot of fiddly something but th that's just crazy it's crazy good put a little bit of tube screamer in front of it wow okay um let's go through the eq i guess not not that it matters <laughs> ridiculously loud for my experience with amps I you know hey I'm a studio dude so but obviously if you want the tone you gotta crank it that's what you gotta do see it gets thinner here which is all fine so I crank that a bit more that's already great sound and you can get killer sounds without cranking it just push it with something is it gonna be the same no but it's gonna be awesome. Oh. 
plus, if you want that ACDC sound, they didn't have a lot of gain. They had much less gain than that. It was pretty much almost a clean sound. I know you don't want to hear this, but it's true. It's way too much. Copyright. works that old bag of chips <sighs> gonna go through the ox and then of course the eye and here's the ox <laughs> to the talking cab. <laughs> my head. Again, I'm just a wuss, that's why. Okay, that's primarily why. <laughs> this is DI into the uh, two notes torpedo cab with a preset one, which is a 412, I guess. <laughs> Having fun. The thick, saturated sound. Why? Because that's what the amp's doing. So, um, you heard that? Oh, let's crank that. Okay, it's just, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having Way too much fun. So, it's $9.99. It's very light, if you ask me. I was amazed how light it is. It is this light. Um, 
it's got all the classic-y stuff. It's a one-channel thing. But obviously, the one-channel offers quite a bit. In addition to the classic stuff, it has non-classic stuff, like a DI out, which way cool. I mean, with that uh, torpedo cap, 299, add to the amp, all of a sudden, this thing can do DI. Obviously, you still need a load. Either you need a load box, or you need to have this on a cab. You can't run it without a load. That's not what it does. Um, so it's got an effects loop, uh, uh, which is loose switchable, which is pretty awesome. Also, Plexus usually don't, didn't have this. Um, most importantly, it has only 20 watts, switchable to less. So the less is not bedroom level, but tolerant neighbor level. Let's put it that way. Um, obviously, volume and tone are not independent. You can't go, oh, I'm gonna, I want it quiet, but with gain. Not going to happen, because you crank up the gain, you crank up the quiet. The thing that impresses me, now that I've dimed it, I went to 11, even though it only goes to 10, but you get the reference, you know, um, is I don't like amps that go into power amp saturation, or, yeah, power amp distortion, because of the sag. They get squishy, they get muddy, they get non-responsive. And obviously, this is not as responsive when I'm doing chugga chugga chug chug things as the JCM um, when you're getting into those gain territories. But completely cranked. It was not mush. It was not only dirt. It was not unresponsive. It was squishier in the attack, but in a completely manageable way giving me classic rock tones. And of course, those classic rock tones have that density and that squish, um, but in a very pleasant way. So for the first time, I'm going to say I get what the Plexi is about, and um, I wouldn't mind having one of these. Uh, oh, we forgot one thing. Comparison to something else. Yeah. So... I don't have a 1959 SLP here because it would be from 1959 and would be worth as much as my house. No, I don't have that. I don't even have a modern Plexi here. What I do have is something Plexi-ish, which is right behind me, right there. right. There. That's the Friedman small box, which is a modern version of a Plexi. Um, and I'm going to go and see, oh, it doesn't have the four inputs. It doesn't have the bright and the non-bright and stuff. But why not compare it with that cab? This could be a problem because that's a 50 watt amp. Okay, okay, it's different. It doesn't have, you know, I'm not mixing, it's, it's a different amp, but it's a plexi type circuit. So I'm gonna go, where was I here, eight. Yeah, I get that, I, I see. Of course, we're comparing 999, which is not a thousand, Alex. Um, we had an argument about it. And, uh, and I think 2800? It's not fair. This is an ultra boutique amp. This is not budget, but it's, you know, under a thousand. has more gain now. I'm going to crank this up all the way. So a small box. This is very interesting because I'm going to try to get the volumes right.
Okay, okay. This is extremely close between this and the Friedman small box. However, the small box, because of its 50 watts and more heft, has more bottom end. It feels bigger and rounder in the bottom. But tonally, that's the same sound. Well, because the Friedman wants to be this in a boutique version. And obviously it's got more stuff and it's got, you know, the HB channel, no, the Brown Eye channel, the BE channel, but whatever. That's the only plexi I have as a reference. And that's it. It's, it's doing it. Under a thousand bucks, lightweight, all that stuff. I think, I, I can't find anything wrong with this. If you're in the market for a plexi, I'm gonna suggest, please get this, because it's less expensive, lighter, doesn't kill you, only gives you a headache. Um, that's the shit. I'm gonna say, well done, Marshall. I never thought in a million years I would say this, but I'm very impressed. Wow, Marshall, this is what we've been asking for for a long ass time. You just made us wait, you fuckers. So, links below. Thanks to Leslie for sitting through this cacophony. And um, animals at the end.